Ladies and gents. Yeah, nice. Ladies and gents, welcome to Japanese 101. Lesson 37. Evie has informed us. It is indeed lesson 37. And today, I want to um, talk about advanced usages of the question marking particle, which go beyond just marking a question simply. Tsekocho. Is, is a very nice, is a very, very nice word. Oh, you commissioned. Very nice. Okay. Let us jump in. Okay, here we are. Advanced use of ka. Now, before we get started, um, one of the big topics today is going to be what I often refer to as embedded questions. Um, I think that's the most common way that it is referred to. So to understand embedded questions properly, let us quickly review how like the general relative clause structure works in Japanese. This shouldn't take all that long for, you know, it is, it is quite a simple affair after all. Um, let me make this white. There we go. Um, the general way that you have a, a relative clause is that let us remind ourselves that in general, in, in Japanese, generally, um, you know, um, verbs, right? Mark, uh, verbs mark the end of a clause, end of clause, right? That's kind of like the important bit. And then that means that if we have a clause, which is some sort of structure, which it can be also a sentence, the shortest sentence is one clause. Um, so we have any clause which ends in some sort of verb. And generally the way to make a relative clause or a subordinate clause in Japanese is simply by meshing some sort of noun here. Now note that this noun can also take the shape of simply no, which is sort of like a noun stand in or um, sometimes koto for just like nominalization. And all of these will lead to this clause being like turned into a sort of subordinate clause. Um, yes, today we will also talk about kadoka that is included. So the important part is that um, you'll have some sort of, some sort of clause followed by some sort of noun object. So at least something that can act as a noun um, or a straight up noun. And then this is what we would call um, like this thing here. We refer to this as a noun phrase. A noun phrase. Okay, a noun phrase, um, which by itself acts like a noun. It can do this whole noun phrase here um, that I'm going to mark in red. This whole noun phrase here can do exactly the same things that a normal noun can do, which means it can be the subject of a clause, it can be the object, it can be like the topic, all of these things, right? The indirect object, whatever. It can do everything that um, a noun can do. Ten ten, thank you for the ten months. Nice. Double digits. Thank you so much. Merry Christmas. <laughs> so that is the important part for like relative clauses here. Or subordinate clauses. Now the reason why I wanted to bring this up is because you will see that these embedded questions work a lot like just standard uh, subordinate clauses. Uh, in fact, they basically are just standard. They are just standard subordinate clauses. But rather than uh, the clause ending in just the verb, you will have some sort of verb clause ending in ka, sort of like a question. And that's why they're called embedded questions because they're essentially whole question clauses that are like embedded into the middle of the sentence somewhere. Right. So let us look at um, a simple example of that and then we can talk about it. Um, so, for example, right, and let me get my text tool for this. So that will be a little bit more appropriate. I think something like this. Hey, Glenn. Uh, wait, Glenn Olof. Thank you for the follow. Follow. Arigato gozaimasu. So something that you might see was uh, that you might see is something like this. Um, kairo wa. Right, let's let's do kairo like this. Kairo wa. Um, <laughs> that's the wrong. Ha Sorry, I was typing this yesterday. Doko no kuni ni aru ka eto shite shite imasu ka? Question mark. Okay, 
So here we have a very typical use of an embedded question. I will maybe split this off like that, or what makes most, maybe it's like a pretty good splitting point for this sentence. Um, oop, not like this. Come on. I want the T on the, on the top line. There we go. <laughs> All right. I'm happy with that. Yoranai ka? Yoranai yo. Yoranai. Kyo wa yoranai. Um, kadouka kika, eto, kika nakte mo wakaru hazu da. Um, that's true. Ooh. So this is a very typical example of an embedded question. Now, one thing to note right off the bat is that generally, right, topics will almost never be included in the subordinate phrase. They were um, topics generally are part of the overlying clause or the the um, the the main clause, right? So whenever you mark a topic that will generally be outside of the subordinate clause. When you have um, a topic that looks like it may be part of the clause. So for example, um, we've talked about this in the past, but commas are a little bit of an optional thing. So you may not have this comma here, right? You may not have this. Now it looks a lot like it's part of the same clause, but even then in 90% of the cases or even 99, um, topics will usually pertain to the overlying clause, the, the main clause rather than the subordinate. So in a subordinate, you're more likely to find like subjects simply marked with ga. Um, when you have a wa in a subordinate clause, you can probably assume that it is not used as a topic marker, but rather just to add contrast in case in, in some cases. Um, so you might have somewhat used like in constructions such as yatte wa ikenai and stuff like that. That can be part of a subordinate, but it's not really used as a topic marker there. It's more used as a contrast marker. Do you know what country Cairo lies? Yeah, exactly. So let me add back in this um, comma because it makes everything a little bit clearer. So now let us look at um, the actual meat of what I want to talk about today, which is this part here. Doko no kuni ni aru ka? This is the embedded question, okay? This part is the embedded question. Doko no kuni ni aru ka? Which is, if we just take this out, just means like, you know, what what uh, what country is it in? What country is it in? What country is it in? So this is just a question, really. And now hopefully it's becoming more clear why these are simply called embedded questions, because they're really not much more than that. It's simply like a full on like question embedded into a sentence. So basically, doko no kuni ni aru ka? Where is it? And the important part here is, of course, using ka at the end. Ka marks this as an embedded question. And then we have shite imasu ka, which just means do you know, right? Shite imasu ka, do you know, are you aware? Like, do you know that information? So basically, do you know the answer to this question, right? So you, this is the question, and then we ask, do you know? What country is it in, do you know? And it, if we go back to the overlying clause, is Cairo. Cairo being the um, the capital of uh, Egypt, right? So do you know what country Cairo is in? That It is the capital, isn't it? I'm pretty sure it is. Um, so basically, do you know what country Cairo is in? Cairo is in, right? Um, some more things to point out. Let us see here. Boop, 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 boop. Let me get rid of this. Um, like I mentioned before, right, this whole object now kind of acts just like a noun would. This is this is still considered a noun phrase, okay? Noun phrase. It is a question noun phrase, but it's still, it's still a noun phrase, okay? So it works all the same way. And you can even add like a particle in here in the middle. Doko no kuni ni aru ka ga shitemasu ka? So you could do that. I feel like in the case of um, shiru here especially, shitemasu ka, it's... Um, a bit more natural to leave out the particle. Often you will maybe leave out the particle, but um, you don't have to. Um, you can include a particle here, that's fine. Like I said, this is a noun phrase and any particle that you can fit after a noun, you can fit after this. Even though it ends in ka, 
you don't really have to worry about that. So all like combinations like that, all the combinations that you might end up with, like ka o is valid if it's in a construction like this. If if ka here is part of of this embedded question, um, and it's it's a direct object, then saying something like, you know, embedded question ka o is is fine, and then it continues. Even though this usually wouldn't like you wouldn't have an o and then because the other place where you find ka is at the as a question marker at the end of a sentence. And then obviously, if it's at the end of a sentence, you can't have anything here. But this is sort of a different use, so the rules are a little bit different. Well, it's not even that the rules are different, it's just that the other usage is just by definition the end of the sentence. And you don't end, you don't put anything after the end because that would mean it's not the end, right? Okay, let us let us look at some more examples, okay? But um, this is becoming like a little bit clear, I hope. Embedded questions can give people a lot of trouble because the phrasing is quite different from what you might be used to from English or other things. So instead of saying o te arai wa doko desu ka, you could say o te, o te arai wa doko desu ka. So in in this case, um, it would be best to leave out the this because you almost never have polite forms within subordinate clauses. That is very uncommon. So in this case. Um, I would um, leave out the this because um, in that case it actually only like pertains to making things like more polite. So o te arai wa doko ka shiteimasu ka is perfectly fine. O te arai wa doko ka shiteimasu ka. Yeah, and you can use the kanji for doko if you want to be fancy like Tintin. Um, right after class of water, and I thought what kanji is ka? <laughs> yes. Um, so let us look at another example. I'll just type this one out. It was an accident. Yeah, sometimes you have autocorrect or auto convert. Dono, dono shukudai ga muzuka shi ka or muzuka shi muzuka ka o shiete kudasai. Not the sai. There, shiete kudasai. And let me. Do this. There we go. That fits well. If you change "してますか" to "聞きましたか," ka, would the sentence mean "Did you hear where Cairo is?" Uh, yes. So Cairo wa dono kuni ni aru ka kikimashita ka. Have you heard where what country Cairo is in? Yes. You can change that. You can change it like that. Um, Jesus, is that the kujitai of of um of like the ko from koko? <laughs> Gus, thanks for the follow. Follow, arigatou gozaimasu. Can different verse? Yes. Okay. Pop. Can I please switch? There you go. Sometimes it takes a long time to switch layers. Dono shukudai ga muzukashikatta. So, first of all, this is once again our embedded question, our relative clause or our subordinate clause phrased as a question. So, what does this mean? Dono shukudai. I will um, just quickly furiganize this because why not? Shukudai. Shukudai ga, eto, muzuka, muzukashi, muzukashikata. And then, oshiete. I'm gonna assume you know oshieru, hopefully. If not, you learn it now. Oshieru means to tell or to teach, right? My furigana are as pretty as ever. Dono shukudai ga, muzukashikata ka. Um, if we just translate this, so if we were to interpret this as like a straight up question, it just means like, you know, which, which homework, I'm going to shorten homework to HM. Homework was difficult. Which homework was difficult? Uh, HW, yeah, sorry. For some reason, the M was like more important in my mind, like in home, like that sort of endings on homework because I don't know I can't explain it okay um, I don't know what my brain was thinking which homework was difficult um, so you know dono shukudai ga muzukashikatta ka which homework was difficult and then we simply asked uh, we simply ask oshiete kudasai please tell me so please tell me which homework was difficult right please tell me which homework was the was the difficult one basically. <clears> HW <throat> and Corona Times really is home without yeah. Which part of the homework was difficult? Yeah. 
Now, in this case, this is more a matter of phrasing. Um, I would say, we don't say which homework, I don't know why. Mm, so, as far as Japanese is concerned, I would say the, the, the difference between saying like, um, that would be specifically which part of the homework was difficult. Um, I guess when they say, I think it means more like which subject. Yeah, I know you mean in English. I just wanted to clarify um, why I didn't say which part of the homework, because I feel like it makes it sound like it was part of a specific homework. I feel that when you phrase it like this, it sounds like, um, it sounds like which subject, like which, which teacher gave the difficult homework, that kind of thing. Almost feels like two different sentences. Yeah. Which assignment? Yeah, I guess which assignment was difficult? Which assignment was the difficult one? Which piece of homework? Yeah. Again, this all is just an, this just a matter of English, um, a matter of like English being difficult. Um, all right. But you can kind of see how the pattern repeats. Um, you can add anything in here. So if I just delete this, we could add anything in front of the, in front of this part, any like clause, uh, which piece of homework. Yeah, we can really like ask about anything. So I don't know. Um, do you anime ga suki ka? Right? Do you anime ga suki ka? What kind? Tell me what kind of anime you like. Please tell me what kind of anime you like. Something like that. Right? So this structure is very versatile and it basically just repeats over and over. Can we embed a question inside an embedded question? Uh, yes. Um, so just like you can have in theory, you can have an infinite amount of subordinate clauses. So you can have a clause, then you have a subordinate to that, and you can have a subordinate to that, etc., 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 etc. That does work. It becomes a bit of a mental acrobatic exercise um, when you try to actually do that. So I wouldn't like worry too much about it. If ever it becomes a thing, um, or if ever it is used, or you have to um, actually use it yourself because it makes sense. I hope that it will just kind of make sense at that point. It's nothing different. It's just the same principle applied again. It's kind of like you do mental recursion. <laughs> you just do the same thing twice. So if you treat the subordinate clause as a clause, that clause can of course have um, noun phrases as part of like the subject or the object um, that are clauses by themselves, right? It really just works the same way. There's there is no there is no real difference between having one layer and having multiples. And the same goes for embedded questions. Though again, um, having a natural example of that happening, even though it is not super uncommon, at least for subordinate clauses in general, to have at least two layers is actually not all that uncommon. But um, trying to come up with examples that are specifically deep are you know um, is sometimes very contrived. After the ka, is it usually something like shiru, oshieru, oboeru? Um, it doesn't have to be, but often yes, because you're you're asking about something or you're you're like because um, it's always the embedded question is always a question, so it's always about some information that you want to get. Um, you can also say I'll make another example where it doesn't use that, but it still uses a similar word. Um, kairo, with saying. Mm, I'm assuming you mean Cairo. Cairo, Cairo ga doko? Cairo ga doko ni aru ka? Kita koto ga aru ka areba osiete kudasai. Instead of two question thing is in a row, be more natural. Well, first of all, you should make Cairo. You should make. Um, we're talking about Cairo, not Cario, right? Cario is not a city I know. You should um, not use the ga particle there. I think it's much better to use wa, at least in this case. Because what makes it a lot clearer that um, yeah, what makes it clearer that that's what you're actually asking about, and I think ga makes it like sound a little bit weird in this case. Um, I mean, the sentence is fine. Other than that, Cairo wa doko Cairo wa eto doko ni aru ka kita koto ga areba oshiete kudasai. Yeah, that's fine. So here we just have. 
like two layers. We have Kairo wa doko ni aru ka kita koto aru. Or, yeah, kita koto aru. I have heard where Kairo is. And then instead of kita koto ga aru, we just say ga areba. And then we add another clause. Now, um, specifically, the last clause there, Oshietu Kalasai, is now no longer a dependent clause. Or is it? I'm not sure. It's certainly like the other clause is not relative anymore because、um, conditionals, I think, are on like conditional clauses work、um, with independent clauses rather than dependent clauses. Yeah, it's a, it's a conditional clause then. But that's still a separate clause. But yeah, yeah, it's not the same. It is, it is theoretically not the same at that point.、Um, it is still another clause, but it's not,、um, it's not the same kind of like、um, dependent clause you would have. Um, with what we're talking about here, or、um, the relative clauses I talked about earlier. So,、um, I have another example here where instead of a question, it is just making a statement. Sappari. Okay, so this is an example where we're not actually asking a question, we're just making a statement. So, what is this sentence saying? Dore ga oishii ka, mazui ka, sappari wakarimasen. So, this is actually a good example as well because it uses two kas.、Um, Now, the way this works is basically、um, you have like an, an, an or sort of thing. It's like a logical or kind of, but dore ga,、uh, which, which one, right? And then we have oishi ka, mazui ka. Like which one, is, which one is delicious? Which one is disgusting? Mazui is like not good or disgusting. Dore ga oishi ka, mazui ka, sappari wakarimasen. Nande. Um, it just happens that these words are often in hiragana. I don't know. You could, you could write oishi in、uh, kanji. I think mazui is almost always in kana.、Um, and sappari is, always, is, I think, doesn't even have kanji. And then wakarimasen is also almost always in, kanji,、uh, in kana. So that's kind of why. So here we have which one is, which one is delicious, which one is.、Um, Which one is disgusting? Sappari wakarimasen. I have no idea.、Um, Sappari means like completely and wakarimasen. So I completely do not know. Right? I have no idea whatsoever. So basically, it's saying that which is delicious, which is disgusting. I have no idea. Heck if I know. So I basically, we maybe rephrase this as I have no idea which one is good and which one is disgusting. Okay? So you can kind of、um, add multiple. Um, you can kind of add multiple things you're asking about by just lining up the cause.、Um, this is something you can do anyways.、Uh, ka can work like an or, right? So this is, this is kind of like an or relationship. So it's this or this, like you're, you're kind of asking about both, right? That works too. You can have multiple cause as well.、Um, so with the other example, maybe, Doko no kuni ni aru ka? どうしてそこにあるかさっぱりわからない。What country it is in and why it is there, I have no idea. So we can add stuff. We can have like, we can line up multiple embedded clauses like that. Isn't さっぱり also feeling refreshed?、Um, usually すっきり。Usually すっきり is more for refreshing, but yeah.、Uh, さっぱりする。If used with する、okay. Yeah, that can be, that might be true.、Uh, さっぱり、さっぱりした。うん、さっぱりした。すっきり。すっきり definitely means refresh, but さっぱりした might also mean that. These,、uh, these words are kind of tricky. They can be very similar. All right. So, let's now talk about something that was asked about earlier, which is かどうか I haven't heard さっぱりした ever, but she just says it can be. Yeah. I, I would definitely use すっきりした rather than さっぱりした but I guess, you know.、Um, another thing, right? So, let me get rid of this. Text box. Wait, it got rid of. Oh, there you go. Okay. The next thing we're going to talk about is very much related. Okay, so basically, we're just going to add another layer to what we just learned, and we're going to talk about、um, embedded questions with ka doka. Ka、uh, doka. Ka doka. Which usually translates to whether or not. Whether. Or not. Whether or not. Which works super similar. It's, it's basically the same thing, but instead of just stopping at the ka,、um, stopping at the ka here, sorry, I wrote this wrong. It's kadoka with a long, the long, kadoka. 
Someone's about to point it out in chat. <laughs> no? Okay. Sapari to surto. Ka, kadou, ka, ka, kadou ka. Dochi o tsukatta ho ga i ka. Sapari wa karaknakte komate iru. Yes. So, kadou ka. Which usually translates to whether or not. So instead of just stopping after the cut here and having our claws in the front, we just smack, we just slap doka at the at the end of it, and then we continue our we continue our claws here. Or sorry, we continue our sentence here. So the embedded question just becomes a little bit longer. Okay, let's look at some examples. Hey, the bitten one, how are you doing? So an example of that would be. Um, Tsuma, tsuma ga ne, eh, nete iru ka dou ka wakaranai. So, wakaranai. This would be an example. I love how the period didn't fit on the same line. Video gooms, thanks for the follow. Follow, arigatou gozaimasu. Let me drag this down to this layer. Okay. I feel like Kadoka is just a double embed with Doka. It, it really is, yes. <laughs> um, there is basically no real uh, functional difference between the example that we had, um, Mazuika Oishika, or Oishika Mazuika Wakaranai, and like Kadoka is just like another thing, right? So instead of instead of saying, is it this or that? We're just saying, is it this or is it not this, <laughs> kind of. Um, that's why I said this is super similar. It is, grammatically speaking, really nothing different. Um, I'm doing very well, thank you. I hope everyone has their Christmas preparations finished. Ugh, grammar doesn't exist, though. Damn. Do I exist? Tsuma, I'm just gonna add some furigana here. Oop. don't know why it slid over there. Tsuma. Ah, it's hard doing there. Nete. Oh, there. Nete iru ka douka. Um, tsuma ga nete iru ka douka wakaranai. So, note again how we kind of leave out the particle here. This is, like I mentioned before, something you will see often is the particle being left out. But it doesn't mean that you can't have it here. You can have it. Um, I would probably add like a ga. But it becomes a bit much. It's it becomes a bit wordy, um, in my opinion, a bit long. And it's very common to at this point just drop the particle. Um doesn't really mean there is none, it's just kind of an omitted particle here. You can have particles here, it's just what I wanna ex what I wanna focus on really. So our um uh, our embedded question is basically this one here. Tsumaga Which just means Tsuma is wife. Right? Tsuma means wife. Just means, Tsuma ga nete iru ka dou ka wakaranai. I do not know whether or not my wife is asleep. Which particle would go there? Um, in this case, you would probably put a ga because you're marking ga wakaranai. Nani nani ga wakaranai. That's like the general, I would say, is the one that would go here. It's like a subject marker for wakaranai. Um, I think sometimes people use o with wakaru or shiru, but it's not as common. But wa is also an option for contrast. Uh, yes, wakaranai. Yes, wa is also an option. I feel like the most natural thing to do is to leave it out. But if there's definitely cases where you would have a particle there for sure, um, like for some reason, for reasons why particles are used in general, like maybe you just want to make sure. Um, Gail Sai, thanks for the follow. Follow, arigatou gozaimasu. Nete iru ka dou ka wa. Yeah, that could be a thing, right? You wanna you wanna sort of emphasize this contrast between the things that you do know and you don't know and stuff like that. So yeah, there's definitely cases where you can have particles there. Um so basically just I don't know whether or not my wife is asleep. Now let us actually see what happens if I take out the doka. Okay? Let us pretend like the doka is actually not here. And let's see what actually happens. So, what is this sentence without the doka? Well, it is basically just what we talked about earlier. Tsuma ga nete iru ka wakaranai. I don't know if my wife is sleeping. Right? So, it's just... It's... Which, by the way, doesn't really change the meaning that much, to be honest. But it's similar to in English, whether we say... Um, 
I don't know if you're asleep or I don't know if you're asleep or not. So here, it's just, I would say, if anything, it's a way of um, expressing even more uncertainty because you're literally saying like you have two diametrically opposing um, choices and you don't even know which one it is. Like, I don't know if it's left or right. Like, I, I literally don't know left from right. I, I don't know if it's either way. So it's a way of expressing that you really don't know. It could be both extremes and that kind of thing. But uh, I would argue it's the same in English using just one thing or using whether or not um, just expresses that you really don't know which way the needle goes, basically. And it's the same in Japanese. Two states with sleeping or not sleeping anyway. Yeah, it's exactly the same in English anymore. Yeah, I, I would I would argue it is. This is Buets. Thanks for the follow. Follow. Arigato gozaimasu. Imagine addressing the entire hypothesis space. <laughs> yes, just... <laughs> We're addressing all of it. We're working... We're, we're working over over NP and P at the same time. Okay, I don't think um, I will make another example or two with Kadoka, but I don't think there's much to be said here. Um, what is this? Kadoka, there. Uh, yeah, there we go. That's another one. So many followers today. Yeah, welcome everyone. Boop. Paste. Ofuro. Need to get rid of the furigana. Jubun. Atsui. Atsu. I guess, yeah. Atsui ka douka. Tashi ka. Which is ka. Hey, Agathorn. Thank you for the sub. Welcome. Arigato gozaimasu. Yo. Yo. Right now, I actually have a, I have a gift sub to Gaijin Goomba, so I can do this. Wait. Damn it. Where's my, <laughs> where's my sub? Or don't I do? I'm pretty sure I do. Let me see. Yeah, there. Look at me. I'll do it now. And then I'll just copy paste this a few times. <laughs> perfect. Yo, it's perfect. It fits so well. <laughs> it should be my emote. But uh, alas, stealing from others is just as valid as always. Okay, everything's set up. So here's another example. I will add some quick uh, Furigana here. Just so we can read it a little bit more easily. Uh, ofuro. This is ba bath, right? Ofuro. Uh, sorry, I always make rose as Ruz for some reason, but yeah. I guess I just make Ruz way, way more often than I do Ro, so it just always turns into this. Dubun. Atsui. There you go. Atsui, and then. I just came. How long does your learning streams last? Generally, for um, we do a lesson for an hour. After that, it's just like Q and A stuff. And then Wednesdays is usually a reading session afterwards. Though I'm gonna have to say that today I might just do just chatting instead, where we just keep talking because I don't. I'm feeling kind of tired today, so I might just keep it going and um, just chat. But the lesson itself will be over in about uh, half an hour. But then, obviously, we can just keep talking. And if you have questions, you can keep asking them. Konnichiwa. Konnichiwa. Ofuro ga jubun ni atsui ka douka tashikamete kudasai. So what is, our, what is our embedded question here? Well, basically, it's... As always, we just go look for the ka, uh, or the kadoka in our case. Which just goes until here. Oop. Hope you can still see the ka properly. So, what does this mean? Bath. Jubun ni, which means plenty. Enough, or plenty. Atsui kadoka. So, whether or not the bath is plenty hot, tashikamete kudasai. Please go check. Please confirm. Right? Tashikameru is to make sure is there a tashikamaru intransitive. I, um, I don't know if there exists such a word, and I don't know what you would use it for, because um, confirming something is almost always a transitive action. It's hard for me to try reading lately. Mm, that's okay. Soko ni iru ka wakaranai. I don't know if he's there, but I also don't know where else he could be. Wouldn't use doka if there's more than two options. Um, well, the thing is, kadoka is always a binary choice. Uh, a web 2 thanks for the follow. Kadoka always makes it binary in a way where it's just saying that, because it's just saying the thing you're saying or the opposite of it. Um, so yeah, yes or no questions. So when you say, そこにいるかどうかわからない, that's just saying whether he's there or not, which is fine. 
um, because those are the two choices you have. It can either be true or not. So it's basically just saying um, embedded question part and then saying whether this assumption is true or if it is not, I don't know. It's just saying like whether it's true or not, kind of. It just kind of makes it, it makes it a binary choice almost by definition. Um, there may be cases where using Kadoka is not appropriate, but seeing as you can almost always just take your statement and like negate it or consider it false, then that falls into the Doka category. It should almost always work. Um, yeah, I don't know. Maybe there's cases where you couldn't use it, but theoretically, that's kind of what it does. It's just saying whether this is true or not, something, something. I don't know or whatever. So yeah, this is just an example of Please go check whether the bath is hot enough or not, right? Now, once again, just for, for completion, what happens if we take out the doka part? Well, not much happens. It's just a bit of a difference in nuance. Now we're just saying, please check if the bath is hot enough. Which is not all that different. Um, it, it basically just now says like, please check if the bath is hot enough. Or please check if the bath... Uh, please check whether or not the bath is hot enough. It's not very different. Donna hito ka Oh, yeah, that is not valid. You are right. There you go. Because donna hito is... Yeah, it doesn't work like that. So it would have to be... It would have to be a statement where you can clearly say it's either yes, true or not true. But donna hito, which person, is a question, but it doesn't have a yes, no true false answer that's a good example thank you Tintin. perfect yes do, 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 do. all right i think that's that's pretty good for kadoka there's not really much more to say um about this part now um let me see is there anything okay so here is just another thing that i um can talk about do, 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 do. Oh, so this here talks about inserting particles, which we've already done, um, because um, because embedded questions are noun phrases, um, we can add things in between, just like we could add things in between nouns, in between the um, the the clause itself and um, like the uh, the overlying clause. And I'll show you what I mean. Obviously, else this is very confusing. Um, here's an example. Watashi wa nani... Oh my god, I should make this the default again. Um, nani ga todoita ka zenbu shite iru. Let's use it. There you go. Okay, you're going so fast. <laughs> Sorry. Um, this is lesson uh, 37, so I've talked about a lot of things, so... Um, I'm picking up the pace sometimes. If you are struggling to keep up, I recommend that um, you go check out the playlist on YouTube where I start from the very beginning, more or less. Um, at least the first lesson is like, or the first few lessons are like super, super, super basic. This is a little bit more advanced, but you know, we've been doing this for um, almost a year now. Well, like, like eight months, I think, something like that. All right, let me just put some furigana here to make it clearer. And then let me mention what it actually is that I want to talk about. Uh, talk about. Um, Kanfu Pinoy, thank you for the follow. follow. Arigatou gozaimasu. So, watashi, nani, I'm gonna assume you know these kanji. If you don't, that's okay. This is watashi, this is nani. Use this as a chance to learn them. Um, uh, this one I don't really expect you know. This todoku, which means to, um, like, um, to arrive for a good to arrive to be delivered or to reach in this case it's probably like something like to be delivered when you get like mail or a package um so to doita to doita ka zenbu kimi no zenbu 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 and then shite imasu so what i want to emphasize here is um, because this clause here, well, I, I, well, the watashi wa, actually, this is the interesting part here, right? Watashi wa is actually part of the overlying clause because what we're actually saying is watashi wa shiteimasu, I know, I'm aware, right? Here, I'll draw straight lines. <laughs> Professional. Watashi wa shiteimasu, I know. What do I know? Well, I know nani ga todoita ka, what was delivered. 
何が届いたか私は知っています。Okay? So once again, an example of the topic very clearly being part of the,、um, the, overlying, cl the overlying clause and the embedded question being the underlying clause. So,、um, why did I want to.、Uh, sorry, I kind of made a little bit of a mistake here. It's more like this.、Um, can I. Here. It should be more like this, okay? There we go. The, the, the zenbu just acts adverbially to shiru. And the actual、um, embedded question is simply this part. Not a lot at all. There you go. So, the point here that I was trying to make. Ah, bun mochi. Arigato. Foro, arigato gozaimasu. The point I was trying to make here is because this part here just acts as a noun. Um, we can sort of just treat it the same way where we, can, where we can have like inserts. So we don't always need the verb to be following immediately after the embedded question. So even though this is our embedded question, there is no rule that says that the shite masu ka, the, the noun of the main clause, needs to follow immediately after. That is, not all, that is not true. You can have things in between. And to sort of illustrate this, Um, think of this as just a normal noun, and then we can make a similar sentence. Maybe we can make a sentence that goes very similarly. Watashi wa. Watashi wa.、Mm. Something like. Inu ga. Right? Inu. Inu ga. Inu ga. Zenbu suki. I like all dogs. Uh. 全部好き。Right, so here we can see that it works in basically the same way where we have simply this 私は at the start. The noun here just corresponds to、um, a simple noun. The noun phrase itself corresponds to the noun. And then we have the ga marking what it is. And then we have the insert, right? We have the insert of the adverb. Um, which then just modifies ski, which here is our, our、um, adjective. So,、um, this is just to illustrate that really this, it is true, the same rules apply. You can just treat subordinate clauses or noun phrases as nouns.、Um, and then we can, have other、um, we can have other adverbs in here as well, depending on what we're trying to say. Again, this whole,、uh, this whole example is simply just to illustrate that sometimes you might have things、uh, sandwiched in between. Your embedded question and the verb that is used in the overlying phrase. That is totally fine. Okay. And once again, the translation of this sentence basically means I know everything that arrived. I know everything about what was delivered. Stuff like that. I know, every, I, I know it all about what was delivered.、Um, oh, Selb Tuse. Thanks for the Prime Gaming sub. I appreciate that. So, arigato. Arigato. Yo. Okay.、Um, now we are getting into,、um, I would say, the last part of the lesson, which is sort of um, variant, um, different variants of ka or different variants of phrasing the embedded question itself. And the first one we're going to talk about. Uh, the first one is. Sorry, I keep like, burping. The first one we're going to talk about is using, instead of just ka, using no ka. Okay? And、um, if you have.、Um, if you've studied、um, in general, like phrasing questions with ka、uh, compared to like no ka, you might already kind of know where this nuance will go because it's basically the same.、Um, so let me just. I'll just put some a's here so that this. so that I can find. so I can find my, my text field again. Um, we are going to now see what happens if instead of just ka, we actually use no ka. No ka.、Um, it turns out that this basically just like, adds weight to the question or、um, it, it, adds, it adds uncertainty, basically. Uncertainty. That's not how you spell that word. I'm sure it's not. Okay. Noka,、um, basically, five from the funny number, true. <laughs> basically, adding a noka is just a way to add more emphasis and add uncertainty. When、um, usually, when you say it, it's sort of like 
you know, you add, you say noka when you're like, well, I really don't know. Um, if you look back at the examples that we've made, especially with wakaranai, something, 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 wakaranai, I don't know if instead of just using ka in the embedded question, we use noka, it's more like saying, I really don't know. <laughs> like, I really have no idea. Uh, uncertainty. That's how it's spelled. Uncertainty. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I can't spell. Screw spelling. I'll leave it. I'll leave it just to trigger the people that can't spell. Um, so. Sonzai. Also, it's so weird. Like, I'm pretty sure. Wait. Um, certain. There. How the hell do you spell? Because certain is spelled. How, is... How do you spell? I don't even know. How do you even spell certain anymore? I don't even know anymore. It doesn't matter. I'll just spell it like this. Uh, sir Tain T. Why don't we spell it like this? No one you're spell you're spelling it correctly. See, everyone is everyone's just confusing me. I'll just spell it like this. According to all rules, right? I know a word that's spelled sir. So this is the right pronunciation. I know that taint is like tain. So and T is like T, so certain cert I guess this would be certain T. It's a whatever, don't worry about it. <laughs> Spelling is optional. Um Sonzai Sonzaigi. Sonzaigi, that's an interesting word. Um maybe let's use a different one. This is this sentence is a bit weird. Um Nani yo Oops. Nani yo iteiru no ka. Often you will see noka with like wakaranai, shiranai, something like that. Um, so this is a pretty good example, I think. Um, let me go back to this layer. So basically here, what we have is instead of just ka, we have noka. So I will focus in on that. The structure is exactly the same as before. Um, nani o iteiru? Nani o iteiru ka? What are you saying? Right? What are you saying? Nani o iteiru? Which is basically saying, I have no idea what you're saying, right? So, like, um, translate to something like, I... Hello, Kit Kat. I have no idea what you're saying. I, I have no idea what you're saying. The difference between simply saying, Nani o iteiru ka wakaranai? And nani o iteru no ka wakaranai um, basically becomes one of nuance or of emphasis. Like I said, this nani o iteru ka wakaranai is she saying, I don't know what you're saying. And nani o iteru no ka wakaranai, I have no idea what you're saying. It just adds additional uncertainty. It's just like it's a stronger way of saying it. It's saying that I really don't know what you mean. Like you're very uncertain about it. So you're just saying, like, you know, I have no idea what this means. Ah, I understand that sentence. Nice. <laughs> very good. And once again, our embedded question goes until the ka. So this is our noun phrase right here. The thing that you are saying, I do not know what it is. I don't know what you're saying versus I don't know the thing you said. Um, no, like with with no ka and ka, I would say I don't know what you're saying, and I don't I I really don't know what you're saying. It's really like the meaning of the sentence is, is exactly the same. It's just, well, it depends on how we define meaning. Um, the sentence says the same, but the severity of it, the, the degree to which you don't know is a little different. So with the just the ka, you're like, you know, you're not quite certain. You're like, um, I don't know, you're like 50-50 or something. And with no ka, it's like, um, with no ka, it's like saying like, oh, I 80% have no idea what you're saying, <laughs> something like that. Uh, wakaranai alone means I don't understand. Exactly. So I don't understand the thing that you're saying. What you're trying to say, I do not understand it. So that's using noka instead. Okay, and that's, that's basically noka. It's just, it's the same thing. So no here isn't turning into a noun. Uh, n not necessarily. Um... And even if it was, that's fine, because you can add ka to nouns in embedded questions. Uh, for example, inu ka doka works. Um, is there a literal translation of no, of the no? No, um, there is no literal translation of any of the Japanese particles. Particles do not exist in English, 
So they are a concept that can't really be translated, at least not literally. It's, it's impossible. That's like if I... That's basically like asking if there is a literal translation of the word the in Japanese, because Japanese doesn't use articles. So it's the same is true the other way around. Um, not all languages overlap, sadly. Some, some concepts only exist in one language and not the other. Okay, there's one more thing I want to talk about. Tete. <laughs> um, the next one we're going to talk about is, um, or, or the last one we're basically going to talk about is um, using daka. And daka is like an interesting one, especially because of the way it sounds, like adding ka after the copula da sounds very wrong, but it's it's not, it's allowed. It's something you can do. So the last one we're going to talk about um, is usage of daka. My, my ka's are very inconsistent. There we go. Daka. Daka, once again, um, works the same way as, um, essentially works the same way as, um, as ka and noka work. Tete, konbanwa. Hey, West Ham. Konbanwa, West Ham san. Um, but it now means like, um, this is basically like max level uncertainty. So it's just like, basically, let's call it stronger than even noka. Or even strong. I should say even stronger because else the phrasing is weird. Even stronger than noka, basically. So the degree to which you don't know is like, or the degree to which you are uncertain is very, very high. Um, generally, um, because of the da, right? Daka attaches to, um, you, you would attach to uh, nouns. Sorry. Noun daka. Because of the, the copula, right? Noun daka is fine. Um, na adjective daka is fine. Na adjective uh, daka. That's fine. Um, you can't have... Um, so now I use part of speech. You will, yeah. You can't have the other ones. Um, so verb, verb daka is not good. For the same reason why in general... These are okay, right? The same reason why in general you can't have verb plus da is we do not add the copula directly after da. However, we have our universal trick, which basically almost always works, which is using no or n. And it's true here as well. That does work. Verb plus either n daka or no daka. That does work. So just adding n or no in between, then we can add the copula da. So we're now allowed to add it. Uh, the same is true for e adjectives. And I think that's already all types of verbs that you would have. Uh, all types of words that you would have here. Um, adverbs. I have to think about adverbs. <laughs> adverbs are a bit weird in this respect, but yeah. But generally, um, nouns and adjectives, things that act like nouns, you can add dot to. And things that you can't add dot to, generally you would, you know, have... Um, you would have n or no da. When you say it's stronger than noka, you mean more uncertain. Yes, sorry, that's exactly what I mean. It's like, like very uncertain, very uncertain, very uncertain. It's very uncertain. Let's uh, let's make some examples, and then it'll be clear. Here, I maybe may I'll maybe make a few examples, um, just so we can get through them. Um, okay, here is one. Tsugi no. You can, you can tell that a lot of the examples also that I have here use wakaru or shiru and stuff like that. It just lends itself. These are these are genuinely very common things to combine with embedded questions or verbs like wakaru and stuff like that. So here would be an example. We have this um, question word, which is kind of acting as a, as a noun or a um, um, well, it acts as a noun. It is a um, it is an, a, a, a pronoun, but it's acting as a noun. Ima nani o okute kita no ka, maji de wakaran. You can make verbs using copula. You can make verbs using copula. No, you can. I'm not sure if you understood. I'm not sure if I'm understanding what you're trying to say. Um, you can add, um, yeah, so basically verb plus da is not good, okay? But verb plus nda and 
verb plus noda. So nda and noda are the same thing. N is like a short version of no. Is okay. When I make a circle, that means okay. And when I make an X, that means not good. Oh, sh <laughs> I made a black hole. <laughs> oh, wait, what did I? Oh, no. Oh, no, wait. What did I write on? I, I wrote on I wrote on this picture. That's not good. <laughs> Make sure to be on the right layer when I write. There we go. Okay. Tsugi no. So this is Tsugi. Uh, Evie already got the answer to this. Tsugi. Tsugi no aite. Wa dare. Dare da ka wakarimasen. Is Nda Kansai dialect? No, uh, Nda is just uh, standard. Nda is like standard Japanese. Nda, Noda. Um, Nda is more spoken language, and Noda is more formal. In um, very formal, um, in very formal contexts, you might be encouraged to always say Noda instead of Nda. But almost always, when people speak, they will um, they will use um, Nda because it's easier to say. Is it the declarative uh, Da? Kind of, yeah. Um, I mean, it just works as like the copula here. Dare daka. Um, so it's it's basically like using using the copula da in a question almost always means it's like a very extreme question. Um, onegai dakara. De yu kanji desu ne. Yeah, so onegai dakara. Here we just use um, da as um, the copula after the noun onegai. Uh, just wondering what it means that we cover in the previous lesson. It doesn't really, it's just generally adding at the end of a sentence, instead of saying just a verb, adding noda just makes it stronger and it feels like you're explaining something or you're asserting something for sure. That's kind of what it does. So here, tsugi no aite wa dare da ka wakarimasen. Basically just saying, tsugi no aite wa dare da ka wakarimasen. This dare da ka, which is like, Man, I have not the faintest idea. I have no clue who my next opponent will be. Tsugi no aite wa dare da ka wakarimasen. I have no clue who the next opponent will be. And uh, let's look at some how this would change. Um, for example, we can go like in backwards order. The last thing we looked at instead of daka was noka, right? So, tsugi no aite wa dare no ka. <laughs> Actually, in the case of uh here in in the case of um Dare, you would actually have uh, nanoka. I should have mentioned that when you have um, nouns, opponent. Well, aite can mean opponent or or not. There is no like the issue with aite is that in English we always have to choose whether someone accompanies you as a partner or as an opponent. But in Japanese, aite is just both. It, it's like it doesn't matter. But it it could be opponent and it could be also it could be partner. It like it's kind of hard to find the thing. But yeah, it could be both. Um, so I should have mentioned that, um, when you have noka and you have a noun in front of it or a na adjective, you actually need to add na. You cannot say dare noka, but you have to, you can say dare nanoka. That is correct. Is there a word for only opponent? Yeah, teki, teki, enemy or opponent, teki. Very strong. Arki, hey. So, tsugi no aite wa dare nanoka wakarimasen. So, dare nanoka compared to dare daka. Just sort of like a little bit less uncertainty in the tone, sort of saying like, ah, I really don't know who the next um, opponent will be, and then removing both, we just end up with tsugi no aite wa dare ka wakarimasen, which is more of a neutral statement saying, I do not know who the next opponent will be, right? So it's they're all saying the same, but they're have they're they're having changes in nuance, changes in tone. Tsugi no aite wa, and let's go back down the ladder. We start with tsugi no aite wa dare ka wakarimasen. I don't know who the next enemy will be. Um, we can add more uncertainty by adding uh, nanoka. Tsugi no aite wa dare nanoka wakarimasen. Oh, I really don't know who the next opponent will be. And then if we're really like uncertain, we can add tsugi no aite wa dare daka wakarimasen. It's like, I have not the faintest idea who the next opponent will be or who the next partner will be, right? That's basically how this works. Um, okay, there you go. Let's make another uh, few examples. Oh, uh, thank you for following Larkija and Jiskra. Shis oh gosh, these are hard to say. <laughs> Akira-sensei, hey, how are you doing? Tsuginaite wa dare nanoka kankei nai yo. 
Zetai katsu. Nice. I like that attitude. Yeah, so this is a good sentence too. Tsugi no aite wa. I can actually just write that down here because it's it's using the same start of it. Very nice. Have you been doing? Tsugi no aite wa. Use nanoka, right? Nanoka. <laughs> that's not. <laughs> that is also nanoka, but that's a very different nanoka. That's not what I was going for. Um, nanoka is also, also means the seventh day of the month, but obviously that's not what we're going for. Kanke uh, nai. Kanke nai. Yeah, it's good to see you too. How are the cats? Tsugi no aite wa dare na no ka kankei nai. It does not matter whoever the next opponent is. So there you go. Um, now, the interesting thing with declarative statements like this is that the concept of like uncertainty is a little bit different. Cats are crazy and good. The concept of uncertainty kind of changes now where um, it's kind of like saying we are very uncertain, but it does not matter to us. So like, tsugi no aite wa dare na no ka kankei nai. Like, it really doesn't matter who the next opponent will be. So there you go. It's not that you're uncertain whether it matters or not. So the uncertainty always just kind of pertains to the embedded question itself and not to whatever you're saying afterwards. Okay. Uh, let us make yet another example. And of course, I simply draw on the list. Yeah. Did I hear cats? <laughs> Nya. Okay, we'll look at that in a bit. Um, these are not, I don't like these sentences. Mm, this one works. This one, I, this one I think is okay. The other ones were kind of um, not what I was looking for. Kirei. Okay, now I have to remove some furigana again. Saiko. We'll look at. After this one, we'll look at one more. Kono yo de saiko ni kire na mono wa nan. Nan da ka shite masu ka? So here um, we have a very. Can pet, nice. Hey, Shio. Here we have a very straightforward example where we just use it with the question word nani. Just drop in and say hi, have fun, everyone. Thank you. Um. We're just using it with nani. Kono yo de. Uh, yo basically means this world. Saiko. Saiko ni kire. Kire na mono wa. Nan. You should probably know now. Nan da ka shite masu ka? Basically just means. Uh, what's the kanji after saiko? Kire. Kire na. So, kono yo de. In this world, saiko ni. Kire na mono, the thing that is the most beautiful. It's basically just kire na mono, which is a thing that is beautiful, and then saiko ni, which means like the most, like the the maximum, the highest of beautiful. Never seen kire in kanji. Oh, it's you'll see it now that you've seen it once. You'll see it all over the place. It is not uncommon. Um, and then what? Nanda ka shite masu ka? So basically here, nanda ka just a way of saying like, what is it? Do you know? So um, what is it saying? Do you know what the most beautiful thing beautiful thing on earth is? Right? Do you know what the most beautiful thing on earth is? If you see it, um, if you see it, run it over the place. Oh, if you see it all over the place, plus one, yeah. You could use sekai. Yes, you could use sekai. Yo is sort of like a poetic version of, of sekai. It's like in this world of ours, you know, it's just like a poetic way of saying the world. But you told me kire is usually in kana. Yeah, that's true. But it that's because you, something is usually in kana. Like theoretically, you know, usually in kana could mean like 60% of the time. Tug of Nick, hello. Happy holidays to you too. Okay, so that's kono yo de saiko ni kire na mono wa nan daka shite masu ka? That's uh, another way of using daka. That are immediately after a question word. Not using mono. Um, so, in, mono is another thing where you can use, um, you can use the kanji, but in my experience, especially if it is used as just like a stand-in, like here, it's not super common, but yeah, you could use the kanji here, that works. Um, that does work. However, it's fairly common. Um, oh, thank you. I, I'm flattered. <laughs> Um, mono and kanji, um, why isn't it common? I don't know, because it isn't. That's not really, um, 
You know, that's that's not really a question you can answer like that. Something is either used or not. It's like saying, um, you know, it's just like, why do people use this word when the other one exists, right? It's kind of hard to answer this. It's just how the language is used. So a word is common simply by the fact that it is used commonly, right? It doesn't need another reason to be common other than statistically showing up a lot. <laughs> Alright, let us um, move towards the end of this lesson and I will make a quick overview and I think they have a nice table here. Alright. Oh yeah, so another thing, maybe before we end, um, we can go one more step, then we have like basically four levels. Uh, we can go one more step. One other variation that you can use is um, basically adding another. Mm, it's, it becomes a bit weird at this point. Um, it's at basically then like ndaka, okay? So the next variation you can have is having either uh, no or ndaka. It's not de, sorry. No or ndaka. Which is exactly the same as, um, sorry, it's exactly the same as just daka, but it's just like the adding of, like no or n, which sometimes you have to do that anyways. For example, if you have a verb, you have to add n daka anyways. So, you know, some cases this will happen anyways, but in cases, some cases, um, you might not have to add it. Um, Blah, 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 can be noun, yeah. So especially the difference especially shows up when it's a noun. Um, nano, <laughs> nano daka, nan daka. Yeah. So when you have a, when you have a noun, the difference would be especially um, big. I I presume um, it, it would basically be the difference between simply saying noun daka. Or the full version with no is because we can't have no immediately after evident, yeah. We can't have no immediately after a noun, we actually have to turn it, we actually have to say noun, na, no, da, and you can see this becomes quite wordy at this point, nanodaka, nanodaka, which no one says this, well, you can say this, but most of the time people will shorten this, and nano will simply be shorted to nan. So noun, Nandaka is what you will most likely see if if you see this at all. Okay, so note that this nan is actually not. This is not nani. Okay, this has no relation to nani. It is not related to nani. Uh, it's simply a contraction of nano. Nandaka. Inu nandaka. Inu nandaka, neko nandaka wa kanai. Which is just a very strong way of saying like, I don't, I don't care. I don't. Hell, if I know if it's a cat or a dog or something like that. So we're at the like the highest level of um, like emphasis at this point. Um, again, do note that for some words like um, for some words like e adjectives, for some words like e adjectives and verbs, this is this is our only version, this is the only option we have to add daka at all, because we're not allowed to add daka to these two just like that. So we have to rely on no or n anyways. So for e adjectives and verbs, if we want to use daka at all, um, we have to use this version anyways. So it's not like, sometimes you, you kind of don't have a choice. So they're not completely like independent. All right. Now, let's just do a quick overview for the end before it gets like too complicated um i can do one i'll do one example for nandaka and then we can go to the overview so here's an example for um oh god <laughs> here's an example for this oh it's red now i want it white thank you shujinko wa ittai dare <laughs> this is just sounds like a very angry way of saying, I have no idea who the hell the protagonist is. Right? Shujinko wa ittai dare nanoka or dare nandaka wakaranai. 
I have no her the the translation that the example gives is also pretty funny. I have no earthly idea what the protagonist or who the protagonist is. It's just a very strong way of saying this sentence. Um, so that would be the example. I have no fucking idea, basically. Yeah. So we're we're getting into this sort of territory. It's very 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 emphatic. Emphatic meaning with emphasis. It has emphasis. Okay, let us. Uh, sound like anime style Japanese. It gets into that territory. It's very casual, so you can't use this easily in um, polite situations, I wouldn't say, or I would say, or formal situations. It becomes very emphatic. Generally, if language becomes this emphatic, like this emphasized, it tends to um, not be able to be used in formal or polite situations anymore. Because it's there's too much, like, personality in it, I guess. <laughs> sounds like a sentence from a light novel. It sounds like, yeah, it sounds like what you feel when you read a light novel. Um, so let us let us do the four right. Let us let us sort of um, compare once again do an overview. We basically had four versions. Um, I'll do this in white. We had one, two, three, four. So our one was just um, saying ka, ka, and then maybe we would have like another ka. So remember with the oishi ka, mazui ka, we can have multiple ka. Um, that was sort of our you know. Um, our default, sort of like kind of neutral, kind of neutral. Like we're, we're we're asking, we have just asking an embedded question. There is an amount of uncertainty. Um, if we want to emphasize, um, we have the option of using noka, noka or nanoka. Again, you have to know think when you have no. The cool thing about these grammar points and Japanese grammar in in general is that it is. <laughs> nice. I like that. The cool thing about um, Japanese grammar is that the rules are very um, the rules are very consistent. So when we use noka, we can only attach noka to things that we can attach no to. And the same rules apply. So for nouns, it's always true that when you want to attach no to a noun, but you don't want it to use the like the meaning that it has when it is between nouns, which is the like descriptive or possessive meaning, you have to use nano. You have to use nano, and the same here is true as well. So if you have a noun here or a na adjective, you have to use nano ka instead of noka. So we have noka, noka, which can also be nka nka, which is um, sort of like more uncertain. It's more uncertain. It's more emphasis. Um, fallen age. Thank you for the follow. Follow. Arigato gozaimasu. Um, then we have the next stage is daka. Once again, keep in mind what you can add this to and what you cannot. You can add this to everything you can add da. Um, daka, daka. And there can be more than just two as well, by the way. Um, I don't think you will often find like three or more. Um, maybe three, but more than that, the sentences become too long to be practical. Um, very uncertain. Very uncertain, um, lots of emphasis, lots of emphasis, like, you know, saying like, I don't even know, like, I have no idea who the next opponent is, very uncertain. And then um, sort of the most extreme one, if it is even applicable, ndaka or no daka, ndaka, <laughs> I'm doing the bracket in the wrong direction, ndaka. Which is just like at the extreme of the spectrum. Like this is just like it's it's completely indecisive, basically. Complete, completely in the oh gosh, in the kissive. <laughs> I hate English spelling. Completely indecisive. Where at this point, it's the most amount of emphasis that you can add, and it's like you're saying like I don't even care anymore. I have no idea who the who the frick is what or what is what? So yeah, um, is there? But these are only modifying uncertain if the verb is wakaranai. It could be things other verb, right? Well, they are they are modifying or they are changing the certainty for when you are making statements that have to do with certainty. It again, it kind of depends. Especially the the nuance changes a little bit when um, using words like wakaranai. I don't know. I I. I don't understand stuff like that. It certainly has to do with like how certain you are that you don't understand, um, or how how certain the thing that you don't understand is, if that's the right phrasing. 
Uh, other words, um, for example, Akira Sensei used was like Kankei nai. Then it's a bit different, um, where it's rather than the uncertainty, it's more like the the amount of emphasis that you add. Um, I I don't like to use the word emphasis all the time because it's such a weasel word where it's like, oh, it's just emphasis, and you know, I can't. It's basically it's basically another way of saying I don't know how to explain this. But um, it's it's really hard to like find an overall term. So, um. Like as as this progression continues, especially with no no kan no daka, it's just more. It gets more extreme. Um, so we can make like an example, right? Um, do I have to know the kudasai? Okay, yeah. I don't know if I can find a good example. Let me scroll up. I mean, like just a simple sentence. The aite was pretty good, right? Tsugi no aite wa dareka wakarimasen. I don't know who the next opponent is. So tsugi no aite wa. Dareka kankei nai would be like an example, right? That we had. Uh, it doesn't matter who the next uh, opponent is. Tsugi no aite wa dare daka kankei nai. Doesn't matter. It, it really doesn't matter. No matter who the next opponent is, it doesn't matter. It just adds like more, more like emotion, more extremeness to it, I would say. It's kind of hard to sum it all up, I suppose. But the cool thing about it, I, I guess, is that if you just keep in mind the the meaning of just generally how ka is used here, you should be fine. <laughs> if you just understand how embedded questions work, you understand how all of these work because they work, they all work the same. So if you understand one, you at the very least understand what two and four mean. And it's just a ma it's just a question of like, what is the exact nuance? But exact nuance is generally something that you will only understand after a lot of exposure anyways. So like the exact nuance of what this is, I cannot explain to you in an hour. And I also can't explain it to you in two or three hours. Um, but as you hopefully like immerse yourself and consume a lot of the language, um, it will form a picture in your mind what exactly you're supposed to feel when you hear these sentences. And it maybe goes back to what I was talking about. I did a lesson on gobi, which is sentence ending particles. And those are very, those are basically a way of like conveying emotions and the emphasis as well. And it's very hard to say what exactly they mean. But it's more like, what am I supposed to feel when I hear this? And this is something that you get used to over time, I think. And Ka just flips it, right? Ka just flips it. Oh gosh, I don't know what you mean by that. Maybe. <laughs> All right. Yeah, so this is as far as we're going to go. So now you can, we're just going to like discuss questions for a little bit. And then we're going to move over to basically just keep chatting so but this is as far in, this is as much information that I want to convey today so if you still have questions which I think there's still like a few questions we're gonna go over them right now and then after that um, we're just gonna basically keep going but I'm gonna stop recording <laughs> that's the only thing that's gonna change <sighs> cuff flips it I'm not what you I, I don't know what you mean with cuff flips it <laughs> Flip! Do a flip! Do a barrel roll! <clears throat> it's okay, I think I get it. I'll just look at a review and about later questions. Alright. Yeah, sounds good. Well, this is everything I wanted to talk about in today's lesson. So, thank you very much. I will end the recording now and we'll just hop over to basically the same. I'll just, you know, change my stream title maybe to something like chatting about grammar or whatever, it doesn't matter. And we're just gonna chill for a bit, okay? But the lesson itself is over. Again, if you wanna see more of these lessons, they are on YouTube. I'm trying to, I haven't been I haven't been good with upload schedules, but um, uh, there, are, there are over, um, I think we're, there are almost 30 on YouTube that you can watch and I will catch up. This was lesson, lesson 37, maybe? I don't even know. Do you plan stream on Friday? Maybe. I really don't know. Maybe. <laughs> I will let you know, like, I will, if, if I do stream on Friday, you will hear, like, a day... Oh, shoot. Discord. If I do stream on Friday, you'll probably hear about it, like, a day early on Discord. Um, and, yeah, if not, just, you know... I might, I might not. I really don't know. I'll just take it. Um, I'll just take it how it happens. All right. Thank you for watching this lesson. I really appreciate it. I'll see you in the next lesson, which is going to be next Wednesday. So... Until then, good luck. Happy studying. You hopefully will encounter these constructions in the wild. Um, at least 
that would be the best case scenario. And then hopefully start to understand them really, really well. Thank you for the bits! <laughs>